UK House of Lords member Michelle Morn has been accused of bullying ministers. In order to get the public PPE contracts worth over $245 million to a company. In April, UK's National Crime Agency launched a potential fraud investigation into the PPE company linked to Michelle Mon. It also searched the Tory peers' home. A Lord's Standards Committee also held an inquiry into the allegations. Earlier, UK publisher The Guardian revealed that the Conservative peer and her children secretly received over $32 million from the profits of a PPE business. The company was awarded large government contracts after she recommended it to ministers. In the latest, some reports claim that Mon has lobbied Housing Secretary Michael Gove and Lloyd Agnew at the start of the pandemic in 2020 in order to secure business for PPE. According to the report... According to the report, Mon wrote to Gove and Agnew on their personal email addresses, claiming that she'd managed to source PPE masks through her team in Hong Kong and requested for a reply as soon as possible. And when she felt the government was taking too long to respond, reports claimed that Mon pressed Agnew via email and telephone to, quote, accelerate the process. According to a source, Mon was rude, abrasive and was bullying. Some bank records were seen by The Guardian seen by The Guardian, revealed that the secret offshore trust, which had Mon and her children as its beneficiaries, received more than $35 million, originated from the profits of PPE MedPro. PPE MedPro supplied face masks and medical gowns during the pandemic. UK PM Rishi Sunak also faced calls from the main opposition parties to withdraw the Tory whip from the House of Lords, as Mon's corruption allegation grows. It also raises questions about the amount of power given to the members of the House of Lords. Meanwhile, the opposition Labour Party is looking forward to abolishing the House of Lords and replacing it with a new reformed upper chamber. Labour chief Keir Starmer wants to limit the powers given to politicians to appoint people to the chamber in the first term of a Labour government. The party is expected to confirm its plans in its next manifesto. For more... Hello, Alex. Many thanks for joining us. Can you give us your sense of how much this issue is, is causing a consternation in the Conservative Party at the moment? It's a massive issue and it's not just uh, Michelle Mon. It, there are other contractors throughout the COVID crisis that were given this VIP status. It means that they could get fast tracked to, uh, get, to get these procurements of masks, of COVID tests, of all sorts um, and they were getting money whereas usually the government should be asking for tenders from all a range of people and then they would choose the best options but this VIP fast track which um, a lot of supposedly a lot of their friends and colleagues has got has caused a lot of consternation within the party within the public as well because millions and millions of pounds has been spent and not all of it has gone to anywhere specific We're talking about 200 million that was spent on PPE Medro well a lot of those gowns that were supposed brought in from China were never able to be used because they didn't actually hit the health and safety regulations that we require in the UK and there has been a lot of conversation about what, other, what else has the money
money gone and where can we follow this money? Because I think when we had the furlough schemes with obviously COVID, the UK taxpayers have to pay out a lot and then they're finding out that all of this money has gone somewhere where we've not actually had anything provisionally brought back to us. So the Conservatives were already in hot water during the whole uh, Boris Truss and Sunak PM crisis and they seem to be getting themselves into further distress and you know I'm not surprised if a poll comes out this week to show that the Conservatives are not doing well with the general public. Of course and this brings um, another contrast between the Labour Party and the Conservative Party in terms of the future of the House of Lords as well. Give us the latest on that issue. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Keir Starmer has said uh, before now that he did think that the House of Lords should be abolished and a new chamber put in place, one that isn't just given to uh, friends and colleagues uh, of those who are in Parliament, and it should be a stricter regime. But there does need to be something in its place because the House of Lords does also take part in the way that the bills are formed. So we don't exactly know what Keir Starmer is putting into this potential uh, proposition that he wants to move forward. Of course, he also has to make sure that his party do get into power and then they've only got four years to push something through but it does seem that from a lot of a lot of the public that they do think that the house of lords is a bit old-fashioned and it's no longer of use and especially when we're hearing about people who are lobbying to get places there and then they get these peers and then they also are, are, are getting funds so there is that it, it does seem to be that it's a bit of an abstract concept that does need to be really reformed and quickly as well as the country is concerned about the cost of living crisis and they're looking to see where all of the money is going from the government.